Okay, so what we're looking at here is the uh, primary chord scale builder, and I've made these in every key, and right now they're going around the circle of fifths. I also have a version for people who like to go around the circle of fourths. That's me, but I know most people like the circle of fifths, so that's the one that I'm going to be using in this video. So um, it's a very colorful chart. When I open it for my students, they, uh, they immediately look at it, and it, it's very visually pleasing to them, but of course they don't really know what it means, and that's why I'm creating this video to hopefully explain to you what it means and the significance of the colors because there is a reason why the colors are in the order that they're in and we're going to talk about that and then I'm going to give you a demonstration at the piano and hopefully that'll clear up all the any confusion that you might have and then hopefully this is something you can bring to your students or if you are a student you can learn this and this will take care of like 90% of 90% of the stuff that comes up in pop music if you can understand everything that's on this page this is like a lot of what you need to do to be able to play the chord progressions for pop music in a slightly more sophisticated way than just playing triads all over the place. Okay, so getting into it, the first thing you need to understand is regardless of what key we're in, the math is always gonna be the same. From the chart, from the standpoint of colors, the only thing that will ever change is the very top line. So when we're looking over here at the C major scale at this very top line, if I go and go into the next key, into G major, we'll notice that over here we have a black cell, and that is because we have a black key that is in that scale. So when you play it, that is the order, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, sharp, G. And of course, when we go to the next key, now there will be that F sharp will carry over, and we'll add the seventh. This will always be your new sharp. Okay, and then it keeps adding the sharps until you get around the circle and then we get back to the flat keys and it'll start peeling them back off. So we're going to deal in C for today, but that is why when you look at these in different, in different um, keys, why some of those will be black up there. They relate to the order, the shape of the key that you're in. And so that's, uh, it just gives you that immediate visual. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the chord scale. So in the chord scale, that's the second, second item here. When we take the scale and put them in thirds and build it up, we create all the triads. That's the chord scale. And so these fall in line with an order of um, major and minor triads. So the one, four, and five, that's why these, um, these Roman numerals are in uppercase for the major chords, lowercase for the minor chords. So again, math is all the same. One, four, and five are always major. Two, three, and six are minor. We'll get to more of that when we do the demonstration. Now, the primary chords, the important thing to understand here is the primary chords are the one, four, and five. Those are your major chords in any key. Always one, four, five. Those are your primary chords. So when we take the primary chords and put them in this order of C, F, C, F, G, C, G, C, that is the order that we need to play those um, in, in order to create this primary chord scale. So again, more on that in the, uh, in, in the uh, demonstration. But what you'll notice is in this, all of the C's are in green. All of, the, all of the four chords, the Fs are in blue, and the Gs are in red. So that is what's going on with the top line. Now, as you read this chart, primary chords over the major scale in the left hand. So again, that's the major scale, just as we had in the very top line. It's just now there's colors in the cells as they apply to whatever chords they're going over. When you do those primary chords over the major scale in the left hand, that will create your primary chord scale. So when you're looking at it, here you have the C chord in the right hand over the C in the left creates a C chord. No change there. Same thing with the four chord and the five chord. There's gonna be no changes to the primary chords. Those are gonna stay just as they are. However, when we get to the two chord and we play the F chord over the D, that is going to equal a D minor seven chord. That will create the D minor seven chord. So the D minor was already, the two chord was already a minor chord. All we've done is we've added a seventh to it. This is the same math that's going on with the six chord where we play a C over A to create an A minor seven. Again, the A minor, the six chord was already minor. We've, we're just adding a seventh to it. Um, the three chord, what's going on there is we have a C chord over E, but the E doesn't add a fourth note it's just doubling the E that's already in the C chord. So that is just simply a C over E chord. It's a variation on the one chord, and that is the same math that's going on in the seven. So you have the G over B, which creates another five chord, but over the third in the bass, or you can think of it as the seventh note in the scale. So that one there, um, the B diminished, you're never gonna find that in pop music. That's always gonna be replaced with a five chord over the one. And then, um, and again, with the three chord, that's normally minor chord, 
very often it's a common substitution to have the one chord with the three in the bass. So that is, um, that is the order here. So we'll, we'll get to that more in the demonstration, but the, I also wanna just mention this table down here. This first table takes care of like a lot of what you're gonna see. This is like 82 and a half percent of what's coming in pop music. The, the, the bottom cell here brings you back up to like 90%. And of course, like, you know, 78% of statistics are made up on the spot. But if that's not true, this really does take care of a lot of what you need to know. So the, uh, uh, these other common uses, again, if it's not the one chord over the three, the C over E, then it probably will be the minor seven. And that is, again, the same math that you had with the two chord here and the six chord, where you take the G chord over the E. Again, G is a primary chord, so that's, uh, that's you know, this is, this is part of primary chord scale stuff. But um, the, uh, and then the next chord we have is the F chord here, which we will, uh, let me get some the F over the G, and that creates kind of just like a, a variation. I call that the James Taylor chord because he uses that a lot, and you'll hear more about that in the demonstration. So let's get over to the piano, and I'll show you how this all works and how you can put it together and present it to your students in a way that's like super fun. They'll pick up on this super quickly, and, and it's just going to be fun. You could start working off lead sheets and chord and lyric sheets and things like that, and just whatever key it happens to be in, just go to that key. And again, the math is always gonna be the same no matter where you are. It's just the letters are gonna be changing because the one, four, and five are different in every key. So that's it. Let's go over to the piano, check it out. Thanks. All right, so let's put this into practice. When you open a primary chord scale builder, the first thing, first line you're gonna see is the major scale. So we're gonna work in, in C because it's easy to understand and it's easy for everybody to see. So that is just a river of white notes from C to C. And now when we build the chord scale, all you're doing there is taking the first note of the scale and then building it in thirds and making sure everything falls in line with the key of C. So only white keys. Moving up. And that makes our chord scale. When we do that, we're creating a mixture of major and minor triads. And there's a pattern that is the same and consistent across all keys, which is the one, four, and five are major. The two, the three, and the six are minor. The seven chord is diminished. So again, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, C. And that formula or that pattern of major, minor, and diminished chords is consistent, again, across all keys. So that's why it's important to think of these in numbers and remember which ones are major and which ones are minor. So now that we're moving into the primary chord scale, how we build this. So the primary chords are the one, four, and five. They're the major chords within the key. So if we take those primary chords, which is gonna be C, we're gonna do these in inversions. We're gonna go C, F, back to C, and then we're gonna go G chord down here. This is pop music, so no five, seven chords, just five, back to one. And if we put them in this pattern of C, F, C, F, G, C, G, C, that is the pattern that we're gonna use when we put this in to create the primary chord scale. So again, C, F, C, F, G, C, G, C. Thinking in numbers, one, four, one, four, five, one, five, one. Now, when we take the primary chords in the right hand in that order and place it over the major scale, that creates our primary chord scale. Now, kind of sounds like we're being reductive because we're only using one, four, and fives in the right hand, but we're actually enhancing the sound of many of these chords. So let's take a look at what we have here. Just a C chord, just a one chord. C over C is a C. Next chord, F over D. Okay, now we have four notes going on here. So if we take a D, an F, an A, and a C, that creates our minor seven chord. Minor triad, with a minor seven. Here's the root. You find the minor seven by going down a whole step. Okay, so with a D minor seven chord, if you take away the root, we have an F chord, which is the third of D. So F over D creates D minor seven. Doesn't matter what inversion you put it in, you got a D minor seven. So again, one chord, C, D minor seven. Next chord, C over E. Okay, so there's no new notes here. It's just another one chord, but it's over the third in the bass. So it's just a C over E. It's a, it's a variation on the one chord. Get to the four, that's simply an F chord. Get to the five, simply a G chord. Now when we get to the C over A, once again, 
once again we have four notes. This is just like what we did with the two chord. A minor seven. Here's A minor. If we add the seventh and take away the root, it's just a C chord. So if we play C chord on top over A, and then again, we can put those in any inversion to create the A minor seven chord. In pop music, you can almost always add a seventh. It's very rare that, that adding the seventh will um, will not sound right. It can happen in some songs, it just even that will sound too complicated and it just needs to be a triad. But you can almost always add a seven to a minor chord to kind of enhance and make that a little more colorful sound. Okay, so after the sixth chord, the C over A, we get to the G over B, and there again, that's like what we had with the C over E. It's just another variation on the five, where we have the, uh, the B in the bass, the third in the bass, which takes us back to C, okay? Because in pop music, you're not gonna get the uh, B diminished. Like, Billy Joel's Piano Man doesn't go, sing us a song, you're the piano. You know, it's sing us a song, you go to the five chord over that. So that is, that is the very common replacement. You will almost never, ever see the B diminished in pop music. It's always going to be the G over B, the five chord over the third, um, over the third of the, of the chord. Uh, but the, it's the seventh note of the scale, right? Okay, so from there, um, now, what, now that you understand what we've built there, if you look on that bottom line, the primary chord scale, those chords right there, the C, D minor seven, C over E, F, G, A minor seven, and G over B, back to the C chord, that is, takes care of like 90% of what you find in, in pop music that's been on the radio since like the 1970s. Now, if you look at that and you're not sure what the D minor seven chord is, you just look up and it, you can see it says there, F over D equals D minor seven. So we're good to go. So now the first step you wanna do is just practice going up and down. One, four, one, four, five, one, five, one. And then in reverse, one, five, one, five, four, one, four, one. So you're just gonna practice that going up and down, up and down a bunch of times. Once you have that, now we get into the significance of the colors. So I want you to practice these in colors. So you have the C chord. Now in the right hand, the primary chords in the right hand, you can see all the C's are colored green, all the F's are colored blue, and all the G's are colored red. So when you do that, in the bottom, in the major scale in the left hand, by looking at all the green letters, those are the chords that fit with the one chord. So if you play C, C over E, C over A, those one, three, six, that's everything that goes with the C chord. Now when we go to the blue chords, the four chord in the right hand, that works with the D and the F, the two and the four. And the red chord, the five chord, works with the five and the seven, the G and the B, back to C. So again, practice up and down the scale and then then you practice them in colors. Coding, there is um, some intention behind that. So um, our one is the tonic, and the three and the six are kind of tonic substitutes. The two and the four are subdominants. If you're not familiar with these phrases, don't don't worry about it. But the um, these are subdominants, and then the red are dominants. So the tonic and tonic substitutes, those are green. Green light. Green means go. Green can go anywhere. You can move back and forth all day long. So greens, you know, you can put these in any order, but traditional like harmony kind of wants to go greens to blues to reds, stop, back to green. So when you get to a G chord, um, to a red chord, so here I am on a green chord. Four chord, five. Now I resolved on a, on a green chord. So five chord. Another, just the variation of the G over B of the five. And then I went to a green chord, it resolved. Now, that G over B has the strong pull to want to come back to the, the tonic, just like when we play a major scale, we want that pull of the, the, uh, the G over B to come back to C, but it doesn't have to. It can go to the sixth chord, or can go to the C over E. Now again, you can mix these up, they, you know, because obviously fives can go back to fours. It happens all the time in pop music. But this is just kind of the idea that greens can go anywhere, 
Reds kind of want to go back to green. Okay. okay, so after you've practiced these in colors, now you can start to um, just mix up the order and play them in any order. Now, by simply just going up and down the scale, you might find some kids might even pick up on some of the songs. This week I had a girl, as soon as I just played that, just like that, she was like, hey, that sounded like the beginning of Lean On Me. She picked up on that right away. If you start from the top going down, it kind of resembles Billy Joel's Piano Man, except when he gets to the two chord, to a major chord, so that's getting into a non-diatonic chord. That's beyond what we're talking about today, but that is coming. For now, we're just kind of studying this primary chord scale. But again, you can just fool around with these and place them in any order. So we got... up in some type of random order and playing through the chords. Now if your student's kind of um, reluctant to kind of just experiment with that, what I've done is I've just told them, hey, call out chords. I'll, I'll play and I'll just improvise something and make something up on the spot. So, um, and then I, I've even had students where they were like, I, I, I'm not, I, like, they're like struggling to even just call out a chord name. I'm like, just give me a color. They're kind of amazed that like this just works the way that it works. It makes it very simple. It's easy to understand. And so when they, when I had a student that was like, she didn't even know what chord to call next. I said, just give me a color. And she would say blue. And I would just jump to a blue chord. So it's really fun. It, this is something my students have been able to pick up on very quickly. So now getting into the other common uses. So the other common uses. Now, when you have a three chord, again, we've put that over the one. I find that to be more common than actually playing the three minor seven. So the three minor seven um, is just simply, again, this can be played with a, a primary chord. When you play a G chord over E, look at the notes. We got four notes again. This is just like what we did with the two chord and the six chord. Now remember, in the regular chord scale, two, three, and six are minor. We can always add sevenths to minors. And so that's, that's what's going on here. It's the same deal. We got the G over E. And then the other one is uh, what I call the James Taylor chord, which is the four chord in the right hand uh, over the five in the bass. You can hear that kind of like suspended feel. You can hear it um, when, you, when you're kind of walking up. Move it in there. So those are other options, but don't include those until you really understand the first table, the primary chord scale, which again, takes care of like 82.5% of, of what's going on in pop tunes that are in a diatonic key. But this other, these other common uses, again, if you hear something that's slightly off, if you're playing that C over E and you're like, that's not quite right, it's most likely gonna be a G over E and be the three minor seven. So, all right, that's it for now. I got more coming. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. Otherwise, I will catch you next time. Peace, guys.